60 seconds. Greetings. How many people will be playing? Hello everyone. Welcome back for more. Let's play You Don't Know Jack Mock 2. Hopefully, this episode does not glitch out. Because it did before on me. And I had to restart the game. From the beginning. In by hitting these buttons on your controller. The Very annoying. Are used to choose your answer I don't mean restart this episode, I mean start over with the first episode. Because I was not prepared for glitching out, causing the game to crash. But anyway, let's continue, huh? And yes, I turned up the volume just a little bit because I thought it was too quiet. Now we'll see how this sounds. I'll drop it's it back down and drown me out. Even if I don't really count that much. Hey there, welcome to You Don't Know Jack. I'm Schmitty, and this is the best thing you can think of to do by yourself. You gotta try using a little imagination, okay? Hey, I'd appreciate it if you didn't go blabbing to everybody that we hung out today. I've got a reputation to uphold. And I've got blackmail. One. Coming at you, a skunk with a sunburn. How does $2,000 sound? So I figured the best way to start out our bright and bedazzling colorized episode is with a classic. Which country's flag is black and white and red all over? Is Yemen. Oops, didn't mean to hit that fast. I meant to let him run through his choices there. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> you know, no matter how many times I hear that joke, it still makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Yemen. Chuck one up for being easily <laughs> amused. Next, can't we all just color coordinate? You get it right, I'm giving you $1,000. One question coming right up. Given the colors in the rainbow spectrum, who would probably be excluded from joining the Rainbow Coalition? Little Red Riding Hood, the Green Lantern, all of the Blue Meanies, or that one-eyed flying purple people eater? Yeah, I'm pretty sure there was actually no purple. There's Violet. Well, nice to meet you, Roy G. Biv. That one-eyed, one-horned flying purple people eater thing? Yeah, that would be excluded. And we'll see who has the last laugh when the Rainbow Coalition is looking for a quick, cheap way to cut back on its membership. They could just get a hold of the NRA. I'm sure they have a few well, ideas. open your eyes. Looks like we're about to enjoy a When Did Happen. That still looks like okay, Wind of I'm going to show you an event like this. Which I think is more awesome. Then I'm going to give you seven other events, like this one. For each one, you got to tell me if it happened before man first walked on the moon, after the moonwalk, or if it never happened at all. Buzz in when the correct answer is lit, you get a thousand bucks. But of course, if you're wrong, I'll take a thousand every time you're wrong. We're all set? Okay. This when did happen is called the Technicolor of Money. All right, all right, enough already with the socially conscious rainbow of the Rainbow Coalition. The capitalist rainbow is much more fun. Put on your top hats and try to remember the location of these board game properties. The red properties on a Monopoly board. Got it? Good. Now, starting from Go, do these appear before the red properties, after them, or are they not Monopoly property colors at all? These would be before. Royal Blue is the last ones in sequence. Yellow Properties is just a little after. Purple, that's like the first one in the series. Brown, they don't have red. Green is after. It's like right before the Royal Blue. Orange is right before. I played okay, way too much Monopoly as a kid. Perfect. I knew you had it in you. Let's add that to your war chest. Okay, now, where were we? Four. Here's a little something I call two guys, a girl, and a Picasso. Two thousand bucks for a correct answer. Hope you're hungry. It's question time. Which of these TV shows would Picasso probably have found most inspiring during his Rose period? Bozo Circus, Soul Train, MASH, or Baywatch? I think that involved clowns, didn't it? During his rosy period, Picasso painted harlequins and circus performers. He also spent many grueling hours practicing to get that damn ping pong ball to stay in bucket number six. References people will not get. 
The category is, this limo has a fully stocked deli counter. I got $2,000, says you don't know this one. Hey, do you remember those ads for Grey Poupon Mustard, where the one guy would pull up next to the other and say, Pardon me, do you have any Grey Poupon? Imagine a car pulls up next to you and asks, Pardon me, do you have any Grey Matter? Technically, what are they asking you for? Why is Grey Matter trademarked? Your brain nerve tissue, your cerebellum, or your basal ganglia? Yeah, it's a tissue. Uh, but of course, it's brain nerve tissue. With a and nice let me Kia tell you, beat. nothing tastes better on a ham sandwich than some smeared brain nerve tissue. It and truly brings the flavor to life. And death. But then again, most meat is death. So, you this know. category is politically tasty, correct tasty crayons. Death. And this one's going to be worth $2,000. So, you might have noticed that your box of 64 Crayola crayons no longer comes with an Indian red. Some people found it offensive. Well, suppose Can't you imagine to why. the name Crayola chose to replace Indian Red. Which group might you form? The Chestnut Liberation Front, the Burnt Umber Defense League, the Sunburn Preservation Society, or people for the ethical treatment of mauve? Yeah, I don't think it's Sunburn. After soliciting more than a quarter million suggestions, Crayola renamed its Indian Red color Chestnut. <laughs> which apparently won by a slim margin over the second place name, Dried Cakey Blood. Seven. The category's gonna be Purple Pulp. You get it right, I'm putting you up $2,000. Okay, kids, gather round, because it's time for me to tell you one of Uncle Schmitty's famous hard-boiled crime stories. Listen carefully, there will be a test. He got the green light, started dealing brownies, got caught red-handed, told a white lie, got blackballed, caught yellow fever, and died. The end. Now, punk, which of these did not happen to him? He was ostracized, he contracted malaria, he received the go-ahead, or he was caught selling amphetamines. Yellow fever... I don't think yellow fever is malaria. Malaria and yellow fever ain't the same thing, my friend. But hey, it could have been worse. At least he wasn't blue-balled while dealing greenies to some pinkos, huh? Eight. I'm calling this one Nice Knockers. You get this one, you pocket 2,000 bucks. All right, so we all know from that Rolling Stones song how Mick Jagger apparently saw a red door and had an overwhelming urge to paint it black, right? Well, is that the Stones? For its red door, who will probably I thought that was the Doors. To arrest Mick for his I'll have to look ways. that up later. Estee Lauder, Elizabeth Arden, Jenny Craig, or Mrs. Fields. Uh, red door. Eh? The Elizabeth Arden Company is known ah, for its red guess. door perfume, named after their New York salon's trademark red door. But can you really blame Mick for vandalizing the door? I mean, Elizabeth Arden started the whole thing when she got on Mick Jagger's cloud. I s oh, I guess I have to look that up. I thought that was a this door song. Shiny Jolly Fun Fun. You get it right, you get 2K. Ready? Here's the question. Who was Rainbow Bright's evil arch nemesis? Mr. Gloomy, Purple Pie Man, Murky Dismal, or Leprechaun Lou? Pie Man was Strawberry Shortcake, wasn't he? Yeah. Rainbow Bright's enemy numero uno was the ghastly Murky Dismal. Scientifically speaking, by being the opposite of a rainbow, Murky was considered the anti-cute. Oh boy, get ready. I think I smell a kawinky dink. Okay, here's how you play the game. You're gonna see a bunch of different pairs that are somehow related. And I'm going to give you a bunch of items that may or may not connect the two. Buzz in to choose the item you think correctly joins the two. There's $1,000 in it for it, in it for you if you're right. But think before you choose. You're going down $1,000 for every wrong answer. At the end, I'm gonna give you a shot at some extra bonus cash. This Kawinky Dinks category is Ted Turner was here. Got it? Good. Let's go. Okay, it frizzed out on me. Hang on. I know how to fix it this time. So let me pause and I will get back to this spot. Hopefully with the same score I have now. Okay, oh boy, let's try this again. I think I smell a Whenever these fuzz okay, out, I have to just the skip the You're intro. 
Why and it seems to so? fix it. Here we go. This Coinkydinks category is Ted Turner was here. Got it? Good. Let's go. Billy who played Harry and Blake Light Drake. What do these two items have in common? Crystal? Shot Oswald and Notorious Idaho Ridge. Ruby? We're dealing with gemstones. Janis Joplin's nickname and Hawaiian Yes, Oliver. we are. That's Pearl. I remember this one. Black Magazine and Aircraft. Jet. Linda Fiorentino Flick and Jamaica Cynical. Jade. Don't be so jaded. City and Oz and Leprechaun's Isle. Emerald. Yeah, where is it? Easter, Kansas. Baseball field, field, and blue Blake Phillips. Diamond. It's kind of nice that it gives you a minute, okay, but I still prefer the what look of the roadkill. have in common? Are they all types of jewels? Yes. That's it. Hey, nice job. Maybe you can take all those jewels to a pawn shop and get even more cash. You got them all. Good thought. Now see if you can get that bonus. Hey, player one, you got the bonus too. I'd pat you on the back, but I don't want to catch anything. Let's move on. Probably safer that way. Coming at you, thus saith Papa Smurf. How does two thousand dollars sound? Here's the question. Given the religious figure who's generally pictured as being the color blue, what might you call the spiritual leader of the Smurfs? Booty Smurf, Krishni Smurf, Yahweh Smurf, or Jesus Smurf? Booty Smurf. <laughs> the Hindu deity Krishna I'm is 12. traditionally colored blue, so he'd be a great spiritual leader for the Smurfs. <laughs> The only problem with Hindu Smurfs is that old bindi thing. I mean, you stick a red dot on a Smurf's forehead, it looks like a big purple Smurf zit. Ugh. They could come up with another color, I hope. Orange would go well with it. Next, Willy Wonka and the Avon Lady. He's a different Bronco, so you're saying think so. Hey, do you remember those brightly colored chocolate-making imps from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Oompa Loompas? Eh, who doesn't? Suppose Willy Wonka buys Color Me Beautiful consultations for all the Oompa Loompas. Considering their orange skin color, what season will they be? I Spring, didn't summer, plan that. Autumn or winter. But orange, I believe, goes with fall leaves and all that. Oh, that orange skin makes Oompa Loompas natural autumns. Although that green hair is so not working. Please! Obviously they should be blondes. <laughs> Yes, obviously. Here's a little something I call, Mommy, I've got happy cereal. And this one's worth $1,000. That's $1, good cereal. All right, give me your best shot. If General Mills, you know, the folks that make that one cereal with the different colored marshmallow shapes, well, if they wanted to market a pro-gay cereal, which of these marshmallow shapes would they most likely include? Pink triangles, blue circles, yellow stars, or purple hearts? Yeah, I'm pretty sure the pink triangles are a sign of the uh, pro-gay movement. Pink triangle is one of the symbols used to represent the gay community. But I don't know how you could possibly market a cereal as gay. Gee, maybe Jerry Falwell has an idea or two. The category is, you aren't anything except a hound dog. $3,000 for this one. Put it in gear, because here we go. If the group Color Me Bad to Death decides to correct its grammatical errors and change its name to Color Me Badly, what should it retitle its first hit? Nothing can be compared to you. Up is how I want to sex you. Isn't that a shame? Or never am I going to give up you. Yeah, Color Me Bad had I want to sex you up. Color Me Bad's first hit, I Wanna Sex You Up. Remove that bothersome phrase ending preposition, correct the spelling, and up is how I want to sex you. <laughs> or should that be, I want to sex you upwards? I want to sex you vertical? 
I need you above for the sex. And now that I've had a really good episode, it's time to have a jack attack that kills me, right? You are about to embark upon the attack. Hit your buzzer when you see two words that match. 2,000 bucks if you're right, 2,000 off if you're wrong. It's not so hard. Just remember this. Remember the clue. It's got to be a match that fits this clue. Colorful TV humans. Great. Yeah. And I've only got a black and white TV. Oh well. Have fun without me. Brian Austin. Green? Green. Okay. A. Whitney. Huh. Probably brown. Tracy. Tracy. I have no idea. Probably gold. Betty White. Aaron. Aaron Gray? Charlie Brown? Or Charlie Rose? Charlie Rose! Perfect. That's the game. Way to go, my friend. Like I always say, it doesn't matter whether you win or lose as long as you get to play with yourself. Now turn off the freaking PlayStation and write this down somewhere. You don't know, Jack! Wow. I had a perfect episode. I did not expect that. Well, I won't enter my name. I will let the computer do it for me. But I will wish you all a happy rest of your day. And I hope you tune in next time for more. You don't know Jack, Mop 2. And of course, Cooter. He's America's number one zombie recording artist. Enjoy the commercials, folks. I'm now going to have to look at the word cooter at every high score table for a very long time. Later, all. Including the heartfelt, my brain done left me. Rainy day romance. And the unforgettable classic, Rain for the Holidays. You and your loved one will want to listen to this CD again and again as Zombie Lou sings his way into your hearts. Copies are limited, so order now. Just send $15.95 to the gravestone underneath the old oak tree, St. Peter's Cemetery, New York, New York. Want to get away? Come stay at the uh, beautiful Sam Benton Bed and Breakfast. Sam Benton is miles and miles away from civilization. Each room is equipped with a, a bunk-style bed and a private urinal. Continental bread and water breakfast is offered until 6.30 a.m. Enjoy recreational sports in the yard. Or make new friends in the popular rec room. You're purdy. And forget doing laundry, because each guest receives a complimentary orange jumpsuit. At Sam Benton, we'll take you away for the trip of a lifetime. GMFC introduces the Giganto, the ultimate sports utility vehicle. Man, this is one smooth ride. I can drive over potholes, railroad tracks, foreign compact cars, homeless people sleeping on the street, and I don't even feel a thing. Not even remorse. The new GMFC Giganto makes defensive driving a thing of the past. 
I used to be more cautious when I took my kids to soccer practice, but since I drive the GM FC Giganto, I'm not so worried about paying attention when I drive. I can put on my lipstick, call the girls in my book club, catch a nap. Safety of Giganto drivers is GM FC's number one concern. This car is safe for me and my family. I mean, it's one giant mother freaking car. With the added height of the GM FC Giganto, it's almost impossible to see the car surrounding you. It kind of makes you feel like you're the only one on the road, you know? Think you can't afford to drive the GM FC Giganto? You can't afford not to. It's one giant mother freaking car. You can put on weight and make it stay on. I gained 50 pounds in two weeks. I feel large and in charge. Watch out, people. Here I come. Chubba Bubba All Lard and Gravy Sports Drink is the easiest, most delicious way to put on those pounds. I enjoy a cold Chubba Bubba in the morning, one in the late morning, one at noon, uh, one at 2 o'clock or so, one at dinner, one at the late evening. It's snack. that easy. Chug it down, America. Chug, chug, chug. Chubba Bubba, all lard and gravy sports drink. 